Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show and what a week it's been for the football club. After 16 months in charge, Ronald Koeman's tenure was brought to an end and David Unsworth was installed as our caretaker manager. And I am absolutely delighted that the gaffer has joined us, <laughs> fresh from a very, very encouraging display against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup that ultimately ended in a narrow defeat, Dave, but the performance must have pleased you as much as it pleased the punters. Absolutely, the performance was, was fantastic. Not happy that we lost the game at all. I'd never... You know, I'd never be happy losing any game at any level, um, let alone in our first team. So, yeah, disappointed to lose the game, but you know, so many encouraging signs, positivity, um, so much to work with, uh, and all credit to that is it goes to the players taking on board, you know, the you know, the things we worked on on the training ground and what we spoke about in a couple of the meetings. So, you know, they they took to it straight away. I was delighted with that. I was delighted with the way you know our, they stuck to our game plan. Um, and it was a, a really encouraging start. Plenty of reasons to be cheerful, Graham. Yeah, it was. Listen, it's, 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 it's a difficult time, you know. But as, as David just said there on, on the training ground, you know, you, you'd be looking for for a spark. You know, sometimes it happens. Uh, you know, when a, when a new manager comes in, new ideas, the players look forward to it. I think certainly second half, when you listen, we all knew going down to Chelsea was a tough, tough ask. Mm. You know, the material what what team they put out, but I think. Going down, I think we saw more in in the game than we've seen in a, in a long time. You know, and that's no disrespect to the to the previous manager, but I just thought that there was more of a more energy, more passion, more drive. You know, to to, to score goals. You know, we had a couple of not more than a couple of chances. So I think there was a lot of positives. Second half, especially. You know, it's, it's never nice losing goals, but I think the reaction from the players, second half especially, when they had chance after chance. You know, I think that it stands as well for the future. When did you get the call, Dave, from the chairman? Um, the chairman just walked into my office, um, in, in sort of just after lunch on was it Monday? Uh, was it Monday? <laughs> it's been a long week. It's been a long week. I don't even know what day it is. Um, and I was sort of taken aback a little bit. I said, Hello, chairman. You okay? Um, so we we had the afternoon together, um, spoke about everything, Everton. As you would expect, and you know, we we sat with Robert as well um, and discussed um, what we were going to do and um, how we was going to do it, and and we went from there. So um, obviously, it's never it's never an easy time. Um, doesn't matter at what level, um, at what club. It's always difficult when somebody loses a job. Um, you never want to see that because. You know that the team has struggled, and you know for, for everybody who loves this club, you know we we all want to see us succeed and, and and win games and win trophies, and that's that's what we're all about. So um, a disappointing end um, to another manager's tenure, but you know I'm I'm very proud to have been asked by uh, the chairman and Farhad and, and the board um, to take the reins. So it's a, it, it's a very proud moment for me. How did the players respond to your first training session, for example? I thought they were brilliant. Um, Steve Walsh and I spoke to them in the morning. Steve spoke to them first, uh, and then I wanted to speak to them on my own. Um, so I, you know, I, I wouldn't repeat what I said to them because mm. that, that's that's between myself and the players. But we went on the pitch, and um, they were superb. They, they were lively. They were bright. They took on board information quickly. Um, we worked on a few things, and and they certainly responded to that. And and you know, thankfully they they took it into the game. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we were unfortunate because second half, I thought we. We dominated the game and, and should have should have come away with it with a victory. One player who certainly responded was Benny Beningami. We'll speak to both of you about Benny Beningami shortly, but let's hear from the young man himself who thoroughly enjoyed his senior debut at Chelsea. And I mean, I just got I've got to thank Clumsy. You know, he's had the confidence in me since day one, and uh, it's it's really it gives you that confidence when a manager really believes in you. So um, I'd like to thank him and uh, John Ebel and all the staff. And what was going through your head when you were told? Any nerves? Yeah, yeah definitely. I was nervous, but Unzi was like, before he was like, you know what, you, yeah, you're ready. Yeah, you, you've been at my 23 level long enough and you're ready. So that gave that gives you confidence. I mean, I was nervous before the game, but when you get on that pitch, all the nerves just, just went away. Was there any major difference from playing under 23 football to being out there? One specific thing maybe that you thought, maybe, wow? Maybe experience. I mean, uh, sometimes I've probably, probably taken too long on the ball. Sometimes I got caught on it and I thought, ah, like I should probably play the first time, which but, you know, yeah, you, you always learn, don't you? So, on the pitch, you know, I, I wasn't thinking, oh, that's Seth Fabregas, even though he's a brilliant player. I was just thinking, you know, what, I, I'm playing here. That's how it's like. That, 
that's the confidence that I have and that's the confidence that Onza gave me. Been a big week for the family as well, I think your brother made his debut for Wigan as well last yeah, night, didn't he? he? Did. Yeah, he made his debut last night, only 17. It's a great moment for our family and uh, it's just it's just mad where we've been. I'd like to thank my dad for taking me training and my mum, you know, all the sports, my brother Charlie and, uh, and my sister Karen, you know, honestly it's a great, I'm so proud. Sharpie, that young man can be extremely proud of himself. He can, Dan, you know, to, to be thrown in against Chelsea away from home, you know, wow, you know, I don't think he probably expected that to happen. Uh, but listen, you can, in those circumstances, you can sink or swim, you know, and the, the boy certainly swam, you know, I thought he was he was outstanding. Uh, you know, listen, it's hard, but he was competitive, he's expected. David has said to us before that, you know, he was one to watch, you know, having worked with him lower down, you know, and he certainly came into that occasion, which, you know, listen, can go one way or the other, but he went. He rose to the challenge and said, "Right, okay, I'm having a bit of this. I like this." Mm. We all talk about the tackle, all the Evertonians who went. We probably wake up this morning and say to their mates, "What the game like?" Oh, we were unlucky. But I tell you what, I like that boy Benny Beningo with the tackle he made and everything else. So right away, he's had a positive impact on, and not only the team but uh, the supporters as well. So he can be very proud of himself. You never had any doubts about the boy? Mm. No, no, none at all. Um, Ability-wise, is there physicality? Is there the temperaments there? Mm. Um, Which is key, isn't it? The temperament. Absolutely, age is is but a number. Doesn't matter what age you are. If you if you're ready, you're ready, and he's certainly ready. You just need an opportunity, like you know, mm. like I did, like Graham mm. did, and mm. like we all we all do. We all need an opportunity, and um, mm. you know, like Graham just said, sometimes you you sink, but more often than not, you swim. And uh, these young players. Have have, um, have never let us down, and from my experience, never will, because mm. they're the great lads with great temperaments who love the club, mm. um, and who will give you absolutely everything they've got. Okay, they might, you know, they might not influence the game as much as a senior player would do. It will do, but he did, um, and he, and he was smashing. I'm delighted for him as well. He's a, he's a great kid. And to balance that, you need a bit of experience as well. And, and Dave brought back your Kevin Morales, your Aaron Lennon's, your James McCarthy's, and, and they did well too. Yeah, you do. You listen, for, for young players coming into a team, you know, and it's a difficult time as well with the, with the run the, t the team were on. You know, it's a difficult time to, to put youngsters in. You know, but I thought he did really well. But as you said, the older players as well. You know, they've got a point to prove. You know, some may have, have fallen out with the, with the previous regime. You don't know, but they now got an opportunity. I'm sure David would have said, "Listen, clean slate here now. We start from now." You know, we got a reaction there as well. Listen, we all know the, the, the quality players as well. Now it's up to them to force themselves into to, to Dave's reckoning and, and, and try and get a starting place. But certainly, you could see second half, you know, the reaction there. You know, you could see there was a reaction, in, as, as David said, his first training session. So you can sense that when, when you're a manager. You can see, like, OK, I'm sure we've got it going in the right way now. We've got the, the right reaction that they wanted. And they got that the second half. The second half especially, I thought, and as David mm. says, he could have won the game. They had the opportunities. The young Lookman came on at the crossbar, had another opportunity. That's something we haven't seen you know, for a long, long time. That's, what I think, the disappointing thing for, for Evertonians. We're coming away from matches thinking, we're never going to score here, we're never going to win a game. But I thought the seeds were there last night. They said, right, OK. And that was in both a mix of, of youngsters and, and experienced players. Talk about Benny Beningamy not having any pre-match nerves. What about the gaffer? No, no, I was thoroughly looking forward to the game. Um, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's did you get the opportunity to speak to Antonio Conte? I did. I have to say, he, he was a touch of class. He, mm. um, when I never go out for the warm up, I always let let the staff and, and the coaches take the warm up. Um, I think when the manager speaks, you know, you listen, and um, you know, I think you can speak too much sometimes as a manager. So, I, um, I never, I never. Um, I go out for the warm up. So I was, I was sat in the changing rooms and I was reading the program. I was talking to, to one of the lads and um, there was a knock on the door, and he's one of the Chelsea stewards. And he said, uh, "Excuse me, Mr. Unsworth, can, you know, the Chelsea manager would like to speak to you." So I went to speak to him, and I have to say he was, he was absolutely class. Mm. You know, mm. and um, you know, telling me a few things about Chelsea and um, about himself, and you know, he wished me all the best and good luck. And uh, I thought, you know what, that's a touch of class. Mm. And um, you know, he seems a really nice guy, and um, he certainly got a very good football team there. Mm. How nice is that to hear? Yeah, it's brilliant. Obviously, listen, football is an amazing industry. It's an amazing industry with the friendships you build up over the years and everything else. And even now, people who used to kick lumps out of you, 
if you met them at a function, they come right over right away and talk to you and all that. Mick Harford's a prime example. Mick was on, <laughs> Mick was on, <laughs> Mick was on the phone to me the other day. To get a, you can a, tell a, Mick there. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Mick yeah. was a prime example. You know, we used to fight like cat and dog with two teams, but you know, he's phoning me now and, and asking me for certain things. So it's an amazing uh, industry to be in. And, you know, that is a touch of class. I think most managers... Uh, down the years have been good you know obviously the odd one or two but no that was a touch of class it is a lovely story and that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show but don't go too far away because after the break in the company of Dave Unsworth and Graeme Shaw we look ahead to the Premier League visit to Leicester City at the weekend Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. I'm in the company of David Unsworth and Graeme Sharp. Now, at the end of season awards back in May, Roy Vernon was inducted into our Hall of Fame. He was the latest Everton giant, and this is why. When we talk about the great number nines at Everton Football Club, Roy Vernon often gets overlooked, but he was the captain when we won the league in '63, and he was a—he was clearly a, a class centre forward. Oh, wonderful centre forward! You know, obviously, you, you t- uh, talk to people now who obviously saw him play. I was unfortunate I didn't see him play, uh, but they regale you with stories about you know how really good he was. Uh, he was one of the ones when I first came down. You know, when he said, "Oh, you'll never be as good as Latchford, <laughs> Roy, <laughs> Dean, Vernon, Pickering," and they used to they would just beat you with that stick. But they used to, you always made sure they knew what it was like to be an Everton number nine and mm. what you had to to follow. And Roy Vernon's up there with the best. And I know you've got a real sense of history as well mm. about this football club, Dave. Absolutely. I mean, Roy, another legend of the football club, um, and I just love the stories of of our number nines. Um, it, it, it's great to, you know, to, to talk about what's gone before and um, I, I, that, that's something special about our club and, and how famous our number nine shirt is and um, you know, one, of the, one of the best here and fantastic and it's, uh, it's, it's what makes our club proud when you talk about traditional um, you know, values of, of, of actually what a shirt and what a number means to, to, mm. uh, to Everton fans and um, you know Pity number six wasn't the same. <laughs> 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 upside down, yeah. <laughs> I've seen you before, Dave. You really enjoy the company of, of former players, don't you? Even even Snods and Diamond. Just well, I, don't, I wouldn't go that far, Daz. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, no, quite seriously. I know I love it. It's great. Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm in Joe's company every day, mm. so mm. I've got no option really. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, it's great. And 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 what we do really well here is we look after. Our our mm. former players and um, you know we're so respectful and uh, you know I see Colin Harvey on a match day and you know you see f- former players coming back and, and what we do is we treat them right and we treat them well and that's why every player who leaves here you know never falls out of love with us because mm. um, we do it right and we're respectful and and we appreciate what what former players have done for us particularly you know the legends like Roy Vernon and, and all the number nines that have gone before. Well, from the heroes of the past to one that we hope will be a hero of the future, it's time for this week's My First Feature. In the seat is John Joe Kenny. Um, Cleo, still got that now, actually, yeah, so still flying around in that. I think they were Umbro as well, and now I'm back at Umbro, so not too bad. Um, Custies was there when I was five, played 
I'm a Scotty Roller League when I was younger, so I loved it there when I was a kid, yeah. I used to love a bike when I was a kid, so it was like on Crimbo Day and I get a bike and fly around to me and cousins. That was my big one. Spain with my mum, dad, and my sister. I used to love going away and then going all the slides and all that was a kid, so I used to be a bit of a pain, but I loved it when I was a kid. I remember having a dog. I used to love the tweenies and that when I was a kid, so I called my dog uh, Mahalo. It was, it was hard work to be fair, so. But yeah, he was my dog. Ryan Ledson. He was your roommate for about 10 years, I think. I think he played crew one time. He scored two. I had a bit of a blind in the centre mid, so. I thought, I thought my career was going somewhere else then, but I got dropped back, back to the back. I dropped my dad. <laughs> um, just having a bit of a stinker, do you know what I mean? So, and then you look to the line and he's there and he gives you that look. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble here. So, yeah, it's probably my dad, yeah. I know he's my biggest, biggest fan, but, you know, he lets me know one of not the best of games. Another young player there, Dave, who's impressed you consistently, John Joe Kenny. Yeah, been terrific. Uh, since I've been back at the club, uh, my fifth season now, I think. Yeah, fifth season. Um, he's been in the under-23, he's been around the under-23, he's been under-23 captain, been a standout performer, gone through all the age groups of England um, and, and been one of England's best players as well. Uh, so... Uh, just a natural transition into a first team environment. He's been training with the first team for for a period of time now, and um, you know I thought last night he, he had a great game, and um, we still will see a better John Joe Kenny. You know, there's still a lot more to come from him as well, and um, he's a he's a terrific local lad. He's a he's a he's a great guy, great in the change room as well. Uh, he was captain, you know, for a reason. Mm. Uh, um, you know, he leads from the front. And uh, he defies his years, really. He's, um, you know, he's uh, he's a great guy. David's elevation to the first team has given Francis Jeffers the opportunity, Sharpie, to run the 23s, mm -hmm. and uh, he seems to have taken it like a duck to water. He has. I was just saying to, to David before an interval, looking back at, at, at Franny as a player, I would never mm -hmm. ever thought <laughs> that he would go down this path. Mm -hmm. But fair play to him. You know, this, uh, there comes a time when you've got to make a decision. He decided to go into the coaching side, they've uh, rates him highly. So, listen, fantastic for him, absolutely fantastic. And if he can take some of his experience and give it to, to the younger lads, all well and good, because he was a fantastic striker. Uh, you know, if you listen to Franny Jeffers, he's a fantastic striker. The runs he used to make as a player were brilliant. So if he can teach the lads some of what he had, you know, you know, fantastic, fantastic. His first game was the Checker Trade Trophy game at Lincoln City. That was always going to be a tough game because they are, but that's why we're in that competition. Yeah, we're in the competition, obviously to win um, any game, but um, it's, it's a great um, tactical and, and physical challenge for our players, particularly when you're playing. Uh, land of the Giants, uh, <laughs> in, in, you know, which were, was the other night. So, it's a great physical battle, and it's one you know, just saying to Sharpie, if you know, the equivalent when we were young was when you played Marine Reserves or <laughs> First Team or yeah. Rochdale Reserves, and you mm -hmm. used to get battered, and you know, so that's the equivalent. And I think it stands our young players in great stead for for a long period, maybe in League One or League Two, and um, apparently second half. Um, I've only watched an hour of the game, but. You know, for the most of the second half, um, we did really well and, and stood up to that physical mm -hmm. challenge, because you have to. Uh, it can't all be free flowing, pretty football from from goalkeeper to, to scoring a goal. You know, there's there's more than one way to win a game of football, and certainly the, the lads stood up to that challenge and we're unlucky. They really did play well in the second half. Right, we're going to start the countdown now to our Premier League visit to Leicester City at the weekend. We caught up recently with former Leicester City goalkeeper Mark Schwarzer. Unsurprisingly, he said that Jamie Vardy. Is the Foxes' man to watch? 
he's obviously the, the end threat in, in regards to hitting the ball in the back of the net. He's probably the one that's most likely to do so. Um, you know, all over the pitch, I think, you know, Leicester have the quality. Mares is another player that stands out that, you know, he can create something from nothing. Um, and I think that, that what's interesting about Leicester is how well they've performed over the course of, was it, probably two seasons now, particularly the back end of last season, with the style of football they play that everybody knows about. And there's no secrets, but people find it really difficult to try to contain them. You know, and that's because of the uh, the individual talents in players like Mares, the pace of Vardy, and, and let's not forget, you know, I think people underestimate how important Shinji Okasaki is to that side. His, his work rate, the distance he covers in the in, in the game is is phenomenal. The uh, the pressure he puts on the opposition's back line, he's constantly at their heels. He's not allowing them any time on the ball, and he forces mistakes time and time again. And if he doesn't force a mistake, he often gets in a tackle and, and wins possession really high up the pitch and that's where Leicester are really really dangerous when they're able to get, win the ball when the opposition's on, a, on, a, on an attack and cap, you know catch them unawares keep, you know, catch players out of position and they're so ruthless and they're so quick in that transition. Leicester City Sharpie like ourselves with a, a new man sitting in the dugout mm -hmm. Claude Puel I thought it was a, a surprising appointment. Yeah I think it was a surprise to everybody uh, obviously had his, his time at Southampton uh, I don't think he, he was one of those who played attacking football you know but I think you look at his managerial record certainly in, in France he took Lyon I think you know quite a little bit of success so he's got the he's got the the pedigree if you like but I'm not too sure if the, the Leicester City fans were, were too enamoured with the choice I think I don't know what they expected uh, you know you look at the players they've got uh, they should be doing better of course they should be but I think they're a little bit surprised with the appointment Looking forward to it Dave? Always always it's another great challenge we all know the success they had a couple of years ago and um, the majority of their players are still there fr fr from that great season. So, tough game, but you know our players should have nothing to fear. We'll concentrate on ourselves um, and we'll pick a team to win and, and we'll go there with the backing of thousands of Evertonians mm -hmm. and you know hopefully we're standing, standing in front of them at the end of the game all, all um, mm -hmm. jovial and, and all celebrating a win. So, um, looking forward to it. Uh, but... Um, yeah, nothing to fear. Certainly is a game to look forward to. And by the way, there are still tickets available for our next home game in the Premier League against Watford at Goodison Park on the 5th of November. Prices start at £39 for adults, half price for juniors. Visit evertonfc.com, ring the box office, or the old traditional way, simply call into the box office at Goodison Park. And that's it for this week's Everton show. Thanks enormously in a busy week to Dave Unsworth, also to Graeme Sharp. Do join us again in seven days' time. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode.